Astronomers have developed a new standardized method for measuring and cataloging stars, and Curiosity celebrates its first Martian year. Oh, and a special breed of space fans are building a new type of observatory for Burning Man. Hello space fans, welcome to another edition of Space Fan News. It seems like only yesterday that we were jumping up and down, celebrating the successful entry, descent, and landing of the Mars Science Laboratory. Curiosity has now spent an entire Martian year, around 687 Earth days, on the surface of the red planet and has already surprised us with the information it sent back home. MSL arrived on Mars on 6th of August 2012 inside the landing site known as Bradbury Landing, which resides in Gale Crater. Curiosity was sent to Mars to help answer many questions revolving around the planet's habitability for microbial life, either in the present or the past. Equipped with a state-of-the-art suite of scientific instruments, including high-resolution cameras, atmospheric and environmental sensors, as well as four spectrometers, including the famous laser of ChemCam, Curiosity really is a fully operational mobile laboratory on another planet. So what have these instruments told us about Mars in its first Martian year? Well, for one, the question of whether Mars was ever hospitable to microbial life was answered quite early on in Yellowknife Bay, an ancient riverbed that was revealed to once host a lake bed of water, as well as source of chemical energy that microbes on Earth metabolize. In short, it was an enormous yes. Mars once had an environment that would be hospitable to microbial life. Now, to clarify, that doesn't mean that we have evidence of past life on the Red Planet, but that the existence of water and potential energy sources was discovered, making it possible there. In order for liquid water to be on the surface of any object, an atmosphere needs to be present to allow for that state of matter. And one thing we know for sure is that the Mars atmosphere is extremely thin. MSL has studied the atmosphere of Mars to try to answer why it's so thin compared to ours, revealing that its erosion favored lighter elements in the top of the atmosphere. With Curiosity's plethora of tools to study geology, samples from the sandstone site Winyana revealed more orthoclase, a mineral that's very prevalent in Earth's crust, to be more abundant than ever detected on Mars. This is important because it implies that complex geological processes, such as multiple melting events, may have occurred in the rocks of Gale Crater. Though it's still too early to decisively say that this is the case, it will provide connections between what scientists have learned at Yellowknife Bay and what is to be found at Mount Sharp. Just as things go on Earth, good surprises are also met with bad ones on Mars. Wheel damage has been observed on MSL, resulting in its traversing of the terrain to be slowed down as well as its routes altered to minimize future damage to the wheel system. This includes finding areas that have shallower slopes than originally planned. But this isn't as enormous of a setback as it might first seem. It was originally thought that MSL would have to arrive at Mount Sharp to be able to provide insight as to whether Mars was historically favorable to life. But as I mentioned earlier, that was answered very early on in the mission. Instead, this means the stakes have been raised for the Curiosity science team and will be adding more focus onto the evolution of the environment on Mars. As of right now, MSL is about 60% of its way to Mount Sharp, where answers to these questions will hopefully be found. There's just so much that Curiosity has accomplished in its first Martian year, I couldn't possibly fit it into one episode, but I recommend going to JPL's mission site to find out more amazing things that this fantastic rover has done thus far. Throughout human history, we've used our sun, the moon, and the past of the stars to make important predictions of what is happening in our universe. The studying of positions of stars in the night sky provided the means for navigation for cultures across the globe. Though we now have the luxury of GPS technology, these visible stars are still providing us with important contextual information of where we are, but in our galaxy. I don't necessarily mean it in a location sense, though that is an exciting part of Gaia's mission, but in a way we can easily categorize a multitude of stars based off of the light we observe from them. Traditionally, we use our closest star, the Sun, to compare against the other stars we observe, but now astronomers have developed a standardized set of guidelines for the analysis of stellar observations. In the paper published in Astronomy and Astrophysics, the authors detail 
how we're able to use data collected from an abundance of observations of 34 benchmark stars. These diverse types of stars are providing the context of future observations and will allow scientists to easily categorize the stars in Gaia's observations. With a billion stellar objects being observed by Gaia, this standardized measurement tool will allow the processing of data to be much more efficient and potentially allow for results to be released sooner. This method is already being used in Gaia's sister project, Gaia ESO, which is taking high-resolution spectral observations from the Very Large Telescope. To me, this could prove to be a monumental mark in our history, similar to solving the longitude problem of early seafaring cultures or the discovery of subatomic particles. Finally, a group called the Desert Wizards of Mars are working to build a new type of observatory and place it somewhere not necessarily known for astronomy. Last year, the group created the Mars rover art car dubbed Destiny for Burning Man 2013, and you might recognize its inspiration. This year, the eclectic group of artists, architects, engineers, astronomers, and all-around space fans are taking their love of the heavens to a new level. The Black Rock Observatory is an exciting new type of telescope observatory that requires no screws or fasteners to assemble. Instead, slots and notches are implemented into the cuts of wood to provide for a unique and beautiful design. They recently started a Kickstarter campaign to fund the design and development of BRO for Burning Man 2014, where they'll not only be assembling the observatory, but also providing outreach through public talks and planetarium displays. Head on over to their Kickstarter campaign to check out their awesome video and consider pledging to their project. Well, that's it for this week, Space Fans. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more weekly Space Fan News. You can follow us over on Twitter at Space Fan News, and our Tumblr is at SpaceFanNews.com. I will see you all next week, and as always, keep looking up. <laughs>